All right, guys, welcome back. So last thing we can apply to make our bottle looks uh, more rounded is to utilize the displacement map to get some details out. Okay, so this is the ZBrush sculpt file. Um, and you can see we have a lot of small skin details like the pores and wrinkles, things like that. Uh, so what we can do now is get this one baked. So what we can do is, first of all, check the UV map. <laughs> and let's try move to the UVs. And you can see the UV is doing just fine, right? So we can go for uh, the plugin and then multi map exporter, displacement map, go to the export se settings and go to displacement map. We we'll want to go for a 32 bit XR in this case. And that's about it. Check out flip V because it's already having the correct UV, but if yours is somehow the flipped version of what you're having in Unreal, just check on flip. I already flipped it. Okay, anyway, so now we can go ahead and create all maps. And uh, maybe I can just put it in uh, the asset folder of Maya. So that's going to be in here. So I'm going to copy that directory. Now back here to oops, ZBrush, and then we can go there, and then we can say, yeah, just had XR, I guess. Um, ZBrush will not allow you to name it eventually, so it's not going to use the name you give it anyway, so I just don't bother. And ZBrush will go through the process of uh, exporting it. When it's done, it's going to say all map created and export it. And then we can go back here to the content browser and right click and then import to game and then we look for the new XR map created and open it. As you can see the naming is called this, right? There's no way you can give it a name. Uh, anyway, so now you can double click to open it. You can see it's all red, but if you really look carefully you can see some detail, right? And also Unreal is smart enough to see that this is a uh, high dynamic range and it's linear, so no sRGB there which is all I need. So nothing has to be changed over here. And then we can go back here to the skin material base. And then we can grab the material and then go to the details. We can search for tessellation. And we can change the tessellation to PN triangle. And that's going to give it a smoother uh, tessellation. And when it's adding tessellations, it's going to smooth it. And we can also now go drag in our displacement map. Now here is what becomes tricky. Uh, in Unreal, uh, the mid value or the value that's not bumping in and out for Unreal is zero. But when we're baking in ZBrush, we are basically, when, if you take a look at that, we're using 0.5 as the mid value. So we need to shift it down, shift it down. So I'm gonna hold it down. Oh, actually, I cannot hold it down any, anymore. There's no shortcut for that subtract okay so right click and search subtract so we're gonna go ahead and get the r channel we subtract the r channel by 0.5 so that way we're moving it downwards okay and that result will eventually have to be the actual value for the displacement map, map. but this is just one channel we wanted to bump out the vertices based on their normal direction so we can get the uh, vertex normal word space and we multiply that with the value we're getting okay and while we're at it we can hold it on M and click again to multiply it with another scalar value just to be able to control how much we're bumping out so we can call this guy add this mult okay that result eventually goes to the word world displacement we also have a tessellation multiplier so let me hold it on s and click and drag that over to the tessellation and call this guy displacement or oh, actually tessellate mod yeah that's better um, value wise of course this one is going to be default value is zero max maybe is Four and oh, default is actually one. Yeah, for this one, for tessellation, let's tessellate it. I don't know, 
five times. Max maybe is six. Apply. And save. And the reason we're using our channel here is that that's the only channel that does have information. So yeah, that should be it. So I'm gonna go close this. And now we can go take a look at the model. You can see already it's smoother in here, right? Uh, we can double click to open the material instance for the skin. Okay, we can now F11 to make this bigger so we can see the effect. Now if we, were, if we were to change the tessellation and displacement amounts, you can see how much is bumping things out. Right, so one is supposed to be the accurate result and tessellation is how much subdivision we're having. Right, we can go all the way to six. You can hit Alt 1 to take a look at the, or Alt 2 <laughs> to take a look at the poly count. You can see it's pretty dense in here. And we can change the tessellation amount to tell it how dense it becomes. Right, Alt 4 to go back. Yeah, I think six is fun. All right, and of course this is gonna reduce your performance for sure because it's doing tessellation. You're rendering a lot of polygons actually, basically almost like what ZBrush is having now, <laughs> which the engine is able to handle it. Uh, it's quite surprising. But again, my frame rate is dropping already. Uh, to get a generic shape, maybe something like two as just a smooth result because we have the normal map to take care of the details already. So you don't really need to use a displacement map to do a whole lot just to run up uh, the model and add extra up and downs from the displacement information and that should be enough All right, cool. I think that's it for the rendering and lighting of a character of course uh, The final result will be drastically depending on the quality of your asset right the hair and the skin uh, the model shape, things like that, has to be good <laughs> to be able to render something nice. Uh, so uh, rendering stage is not going to be able to fix anything that's wrong on the model itself. So uh, if it doesn't look g good, maybe that's not because of the lighting, it's because you know the, the shape is not there yet. So there, there are a lot of back and forth, of course, to get to a good result eventually. All right, so just to show you how to render it properly, you can uh, F11, of course, to make the make it full screen, and you can go down there and go create a high resolution screenshot. Uh, make sure that you, you save everything, of course. Uh, maybe I'm saving the level now, and maybe just go save all to save everything before you do that because it, it may crash. Okay, anyway, now you can go to the drop down here. And then you choose high resolution screenshot and you can tell it to be mm, twice as big as the current resolution and take the screenshot and when it's done uh, there will be a uh, note down there to the lower right corner you can click to open it and you can see now there's an image there and you can open it and that's going to be the render all right that's going to be the whole tutorial series to go through the process from importing all the way, uh, you know, to the, all the shader and lighting stuff. Uh, of course, there are a lot of things that you could enhance to this, but the basic information is there now, and it's up to you now to make things look more interesting. All right, cool. Thanks for watching. See you next time.